And your whole purpose is to have a um, video blog of filmmaking? Yeah, so like that's part of it. We wanted them to be longer form and, and less uh, accessible, but more in depth. That's the, the goal. Mm -hmm. I thought a good point to start would be the fact that you said in one of your Q&As that you've uh, had uh, four retrospectives in the last two years. <laughs> so I'm really curious like what that experience is like. Because you watch them, you've been watching each of the, the films. The films, yeah. but I hadn't seen some of them, and I haven't seen, like, I have several prints of different ones, so, like, I'm making notes of which prints were dirty. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, last night, Nitrate Kisses. I'd love you to see that pristine shape, but it was, it needs to be replaced. And, um, Sappho, that, I haven't seen that film in 20 years. So every curator programs differently, and I really like it that Chris programmed other filmmakers along mm. with my work, and that happened with Stuart Comer at the Tate Modern. In fact, I think he set the, the standard for that, and I mentioned it to Chris, and I think he picked up on it. And that makes for a livelier discussion when two people are on the stage that are both makers, or like last night, um, bloggers mm. about sexuality. That was really, Intense. Were you there last night? Yeah, absolutely. For yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, has anyone like uh, in this program? There hasn't been a lot of kind of criticism, but you've mentioned in a few of the Q and A's that you like there to be like a kind of open forum where if anyone you know didn't like something they could mention. Yeah. Have you noticed that yeah. in past Q and A's, or is that something you're always striving for? It's people are shy to yeah. do that and. They don't want to rain on your parade, and you know I've kind of like worked really hard to get where I am, so they don't want to probably um, critique it. Mm. But in particular, I've been asking people that I know that work on Israeli apartheid to critique the performance because mm. it is a work in progress. That was just the second time I've done it, and I didn't have time to really develop it anywhere from the first time I did it when it was scheduled into a 30-minute slot. So all we did was show the Pasolini location yeah. hunting in Palestina and then the piece that I had done mm. previously. But people didn't know I was through, you know, I think it needs more development. And so I'm getting feedback there because I'm asking for it mm. and then wondering why people I know, my friends, haven't said anything. You know, that's a clear sign that they're, they have some problems. Yes, yes. And so that's what I'm asking for. Because I think it's really important for us to be transparent in our criticism. And like an email reached me that was negative about the performance, just one word. And then the guy wrote to me and said, oh, I'm really sorry. I didn't mean that to go to you. And I said, this is what we need. You know, yeah. my God, I'm a grown woman. <laughs> I could take it, you know. It's not like I'm a fledgling mm. filmmaker. And we should be able to critique each other's work. And I know I've critiqued his when he sent it to me. I haven't been at all praise, mm. all praises. So yeah, that's a concern of mine. That, and in academia too, people play games about power positions, competition, I won't, critique this because she's my boss. You know, all kinds yeah. of rules about positioning yourself in the world. And this world isn't gonna get any better without our dialogue. Mm. You know, how can we expect, um, you know, the leader of, of Israel and Palestine to talk to each other if we can't? Now, do you think so. that this is also part of the fact that you're being kind of historicized while still working like that's a problem yeah because you know in in the, in the early days you've had difficulty f finding screenings and, and funding like in the festival circuits or anything like that mm -hmm. then there's a kind of acceptance that happens mm -hmm. and then a kind of ossification and canonization and then yeah. but you're still creating things so I do you think that maybe people are they don't want to they don't want to say something about an established kind of filmmaker when that could be, you know, I'm so recently established <laughs> that um, I'm not sure. I mean, I really think the Tate Modern did it, mm. although people before that told me I was an icon. What year was that? Oh, so uh, two years ago. Okay. So 20, let's see, MoMA was 2010, mm. using modern art. Tate was 2011, um, or 2012, 2012. And um, Jeu de Pomme, in Paris was also 2012. That was in June, and Tate was in February, and now Toronto. 
and I have some friends that are critics that are hoping to get one in San Francisco. Mm. But you know, I'm getting a little tired of them as well and yeah. wanting to return just to work um, and make new work. But being historicized, I think, could be an issue. It could be an issue if people aren't talking to me about what they really feel. Mm. Um, a friend, well, I don't know if she's a friend, a new acquaintance who's a young queer filmmaker told me that um, she first identified that I was historicized and that that was a difficult position to be in and that I needed to take risks to fail. Mm. And she just graduated from the Chicago Art Institute maybe a year ago and that had been the bell ringing in her ears and I guess maybe the way they've trained the students. Mm. Fail, 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 you know, and, and go for it. And I'm trying to really swallow that and and not do repetitive work that I know will do fine. It could go to all the festivals. It could go to Berlin. That's not what I want to do. I've already been there. I want to take that risk again. 